Russia has another weapon in its war with Ukraine, food. We've been driving for hundreds of miles through southern Ukraine. It feels like you're traveling through the world's most gargantuan wheat field. But Russia has cut Ukraine off from the world. Putin is effectively starving the international community. And now the world's food supply is under threat. The war in Ukraine has been fought most fiercely in the east and the south. Russia's brutal siege of Mariupol forced hundreds of thousands out of the ruined city and led to its capture at the end of May. It delivered Russia one of its objectives, a land bridge to Crimea, giving them control of the strategic north shore of the Sea of Azov. And it's made the Black Sea port of Odessa, Ukraine's main international trading hub, pivotal to feeding the world. Ukraine produces about 10% of global wheat exports. The World Food Programme buys half of its wheat from this country. And massively contributes to global supplies of barley, maize and sunflower oil. It's one of the breadbaskets of the world. Dozens of countries import Ukrainian wheat. Crucial to that supply are two ports, Mariupol, now a ruin under Russian control, and Odessa. Russia's naval blockade means 20 million tonnes of food ready to be sold and transported is trapped in Odessa. To make things worse, if the silos can't be emptied, then next year's harvest can't be stored. Which is why Russia is accused of using global hunger as a weapon of war. Millions of tonnes of wheat remain blocked in Ukraine while in the rest of the world people are suffering hunger. This is a real war crime. Russia is solely responsible for this food crisis, Russia alone. Turkey has tried to broker a deal to lift the naval blockade, but Russia says that can only happen if sea mines dropped to prevent a Russian attack are removed by Ukraine. Not only would that take six months, both sides need to trust each other to stick to any agreement. Trust which does not exist at the moment. Food prices have been steadily rising for a couple of years. The threat of war between Russia and Ukraine only fueled that rise. After the invasion, Russian supplies of wheat were disrupted too, spiking prices to record highs. Nearly a quarter of global wheat supplies were affected and a host of countries across Africa and the Middle East rely on Russia and Ukraine for most of their supply. Some, like Egypt, have reserves to insulate from shortages, but others like Lebanon and Somalia, already facing political and economic crises, do not. If one of Russia's leading state journalists is to be believed, global food insecurity could work for Moscow. We know the world needs Ukrainian wheat, so if you can't use the sea to move it, why not use Ukraine's rail network instead? Russia has been targeting transport links to disrupt Ukrainian forces. But even if trains carrying wheat can make it to the border, there's a problem. The tracks used in Ukraine are wider than the ones used in Europe, which causes major bottlenecks and delays. There's also a problem with efficiently transporting the 20 million tonnes of wheat stuck in Ukrainian silos. In May, it's reported that 760,000 tonnes were transported out of Ukraine by train. At that rate, it would take more than two years to clear the silos, and NATO has admitted trains are only a stopgap solution. Which brings us back to the ports and transport by sea. A large cargo ship can carry tens if not hundreds of times more than a single train. Before the war, Ukraine was able to export around 6 million tonnes of grain a month, the vast majority on ships. Moscow has already pitched for a grain corridor in return for sanction relief. If Ukraine and its allies decide that's not workable, then it's hoped the shortages could be met by other countries. And the stakes couldn't be higher. In Somalia at the moment, it's estimated 40% of the population is affected. 1.4 million children are malnourished. If this continues, many of those children are going to die. During the course of this war, thousands of civilians and soldiers have died 
in the battle. But the prediction now is that thousands of other people could also die in developing countries as food and hunger become weaponized.